Hi, everyone. Uh, we're live on Facebook. My name is Dr. Katherine Garforth, and today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Nancy Wise, and we're going to be talking about um, French immersion programs and students with uh, disabilities or exceptionalities. So you can follow me at Garforth Education on Facebook and Instagram, Pinterest, on Twitter, I'm at Garforth EDUC. And Dr. Nancy Wise is on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I will be putting her handle in the comments. Uh, and while I do that, why doesn't uh, Nancy take a minute to introduce herself? So who are you and what do you do? Thanks, Catherine. So I'm an educational consultant. I specialize in French immersion. I consult with parents who are either considering French immersion for their child or have a child who is experiencing some difficulty in the French immersion program. And if they're experiencing difficulty, I do my best to help parents try to put some supports in place to increase their child's opportunities for success in French immersion. And I also do presentations for school boards and teacher organizations, for parent groups on topics related to French immersion. And with my background as a reading researcher in the French immersion context, I've been doing a lot of presentations lately for school boards on how to support kindergarten and grade one students who are struggling to learn to read in the French immersion program. Awesome. Uh, sorry, the my uh, earphones came out. <laughs> Um, all right. So can you give us a little bit of a background of what exactly French Immersion Program is in Canada? Sure, I'd be happy to. So French Immersion is an optional dual language program, which means that when children are ready to start their educational careers, most parents in Canada can choose either French Immersion or the English Only program. And the program is open to all students, including those with special education needs. There isn't any screening procedure, so any child can enroll. And French Immersion is intended for children who don't speak French at home. And parents are always surprised to hear me say that, but ever since its inception in the 1960s, the program was intended to improve the French language skills of children from non-French speaking families. Many school boards immerse the children in the target language by providing 100 percent of their instruction in French for the first few years. So students receive instruction in French in language, math, social studies, science, all the different subject areas. And then usually grade four or five English is introduced slowly over time. And by grade seven and eight, the school day becomes a 50-50 split between English and French. The goal of the French Immersion Program is functional proficiency in the French language, which doesn't mean that graduates are going to have the same skills as children from French as a first language backgrounds, but in addition to developing linguistic competence in English, they'll be able to communicate in French for both personal and professional purposes, and they'll have the confidence to use French effectively in their daily lives. Wonderful. 
so do you find that many parents aren't fluent in French when they send their students to the French immersion programs? I find that most parents do not have a French background when they enroll their children. And that is who the program is intended for. Right. And are students with disabilities allowed in the French immersion programs? Yes, they are. Because as I mentioned, there is no pre-screening. So any child can enroll in the French immersion program. Having said that, students with disabilities often face barriers restricting their access to French immersion. And that's because a lot of people believe that students with disabilities, students with special education needs are incapable of or negatively impacted by learning an additional language. Many people, school board officials, school principals, teachers, many believe that learning an additional language is simply too challenging for students with disabilities, that having them in French immersion puts them at greater risk, and that they'll do better if they stick to the English only program. But those beliefs have not been supported by research. To date, no evidence has been found to justify excluding children with disabilities from dual language programs like French immersion. And what the research does indicate is that when French immersion students are provided with the appropriate support to increase their opportunities for success, the vast majority are successful. So it really all comes down to the provision of support. Here in Ontario, um, in a document that was published in 2013, a framework for French as a second language, um, it explicitly states that school boards are supposed to promote inclusiveness in French as a second language programs. And I quote, recognizing that all students can learn French as a second language with appropriate support, unquote. And that document was followed two years later with another document entitled, Including Students with Special Education Needs in French as a Second Language Programs. And it, it speaks to our government's commitment to increasing participation in French as a second language programs like French immersion. Great. So what happens when a child does struggle in French immersion? Well, that's the big question. More often than not, the ch the, when children begin to struggle in French immersion, it's because they're having reading difficulties. And Sometimes it's just unclear why they're having reading difficulties. Is it because they need more time to develop or strengthen their French language skills? Or is it because they have an actual reading problem or disability? And in these situations, a wait and see approach is often taken in schools when there's just no clear answer. And so parents are frequently encouraged to not to worry, to just try to be patient, give their child a little bit more time to acquire, you know, language skills in French. And as a result, there's this delay in identifying children with reading difficulties. And then they miss out on these early intervention opportunities. And these low achieving readers feel so discouraged by the time their problems are finally identified, sometimes as late as grade three. And they've completely lost interest in reading. 
they see that their classmates read better than they do and they often suffer from poor self-esteem. It's heartbreaking, really. And the support for these struggling readers is rarely available in the French immersion setting. So it's not surprising that reading problems are often what prompts parents to withdraw their children from the program and switch them over to English, where students typically have greater access to early intervention opportunities. But in many cases, this switching to the English stream doesn't fix the problem. And that's because these problems tend to be pervasive. They're not, um, they're not related to the language of instruction. So a child who is struggling to learn to read in the French immersion program would very likely have trouble learning to read after moving to the English only program. And then for students with other exceptionalities like autism or specific language impairment or Down syndrome, those children also face barriers in access to the French immersion program and barriers in access to appropriate support. So this is how we lose so many of our French immersion students. Yeah, well, and I, I guess the problem is that not many parents know that this is probably the same timeline that be, they'd be facing if they were in the English stream. So a lot of uh, problems with reading aren't showing up or aren't being detected until those later grades. So as a parent, you shouldn't be worried that, oh, I put my child in a French immersion program if I had them in English, we wouldn't be seeing these problems because as you just mentioned, it's something that when they switch to English, they often still see. That's right. That's right. And yeah, that, that can be quite a shock to parents because they have an expectation that things are going to be so much better after making the switch. And oftentimes they're not, there's still a struggle and there is still a need for support. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what does the research say about interventions for students who struggle with reading in French immersion? Well, the research has shown that with appropriate support in the French immersion setting, support that's based on scientific research evidence, struggling readers can overcome their reading difficulties, thereby increasing their opportunities for success in the program. I was the principal investigator in a number of reading studies involving grade one French immersion students. And we were able to demonstrate, my research team out of OISE, the University of Toronto, and I, we were able to demonstrate that early intervention in the French immersion setting can be highly effective and that students can begin to close that achievement gap between typically developing readers and struggling readers, a gap that we've learned usually continues to widen over time without the provision of support and we saw that by using English tests, as soon as the children enter the French immersion program, we could identify those students who were at risk for later reading difficulties and quickly figure out which students might need additional support because the sooner they're identified, the sooner early intervention programs can be initiated. Mm -hmm. And those are the same best practices that we're seeing in the English stream. And what the research is saying with English reading is that we can identify these children that are at risk for reading failure. Yeah. when those they're in those preschool and kindergarten years. And if we identify risk, not diagnosing, but identifying the risk and applying those appropriate interventions, they're able to 
catch up with their peers before they begin that reading instruction. And those early years, K-1-2 of intervention are critical in close, er, keeping it from that gap from even growing in the first place, right? Yep, I absolutely agree. And the research is very clear on that point. Yep. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the research that you've seen or that you were using in those interventions that sure. helped the students? So we did a three-year study with our grade one students. There were 252 students that were part of the study. And of those 252, we were able to identify 44 students who we considered to be at risk. And during their grade one year, those 44 students, after they were um, placed in treatment and control groups, those, those students got 18 consecutive weeks of support. So the treatment group got a program that was based on sounds in spoken language, phonological awareness, and letter sound correspondence instruction. And the control group got a program that was based on vocabulary building. And I taught all the groups, small groups of three or four students, 18 weeks. Um, we used stories that we took vocabulary from as the basis for all, all of our instruction, but I read the same stories to both groups in the same order. They had me as their instructor. So um, what we ended up finding was that the students in the treatment group, those who had been provided with instruction in phonological awareness and letter sound correspondences in English made significant reading gains in French. And those gains were evident in grade, at the end of grade one, at the end of the 18 weeks. And they, when we came back to test the students in grade two, those gains were still evident and once again, when we came back in grade three to test them, they were still, those gains were still there. So, and they, they were able also to outperform the control group on English reading tests, which was kind of a bonus that we weren't expecting because all the children were learning to read in French in their classrooms. So it was, it was, we were, successful in showing that early intervention can be a very positive thing in the French immersion setting. Those kids were beginning to close the gap between those at risk and those who are, you know, typically developing readers. Right. Now we do have a couple of questions, but I think we're going to save those to the end just for the people that have posted um, the questions. And the next question is, sorry, um, is there a point in which you, th actually, sorry, before we answer, ask that, I was going to ask you, um, so with a lot of issues with children with reading difficulties, there's a problem with the leg and vocabulary development because they're not reading. How do you suggest that we support this vocabulary side of things? Well, uh, when I work with French immersion teachers, we, we all agree that we have two jobs, two important jobs. And one is to build those language comprehension skills by you know, introducing lots of vocabulary, teaching it explicitly, stories, rhymes, songs, all the ways the teachers in French immersion generally build vocabulary and at the same time we have to develop those those decoding skills those those abilities to sound out words and you know we would hope that we that when the children figure out how to sound out the word they will recognize that that's a word that they've learned in French 
So both things, it's like the simple view of reading that I know exactly. you're familiar yeah. with, yes. that we have these two things that, that are equally important and, and um, so that our children can understand what they read. They need the vocabulary and background knowledge, and they also need those the, the ability to sound out unfamiliar words. Right, yeah, and that's what I was getting at because I know a lot of the things that I talk about when I work with parents is that it's really important uh, to keep that vocabulary development up, especially if you have a struggling reader who's not having that ex same exposure to language through reading the texts. Yeah, that's right. And we always encourage parents to read aloud to their children in whatever the home language is, because a child who has a strong first language background in whatever language is spoken in the home is going to have a better chance of being successful in learning an additional language. Right, and that's the a thing that um, maybe we should mention. Uh, we were talking about working with rhymes and some of the activities that you did with the students was to help promote their phonological awareness. Mm -hmm. And that's the awareness of sound within a spoken language. Yeah. Now, the nice thing about phonological awareness is it's a transferable skill, yes. right? So once you develop in it in one language, it should fairly easily transfer to the next language because it's the awareness of sound. It's not like they need to learn a whole new skill is just applying that skill to different sounds. So if this is something that your child is struggling with, there are ways that you can work on their phonological awareness at home in English or your home language to help them strengthen this skill. And as it strengthens, it will be apparent in that French language setting too. That's right. Absolutely. Great. So is there a point in which you think that students should be removed from the French immersion program and put into the English stream? Yeah, I mean, of course, French immersion teachers try to provide those students who are struggling with opportunities for success. But if a student doesn't really want to remain in French immersion, doesn't want to continue learning their subjects in French, he or she probably won't make the most of those opportunities that teachers provide. And in these kinds of situations, sometimes a change of program is warranted. I always recommend that parents, you know, have strong communication with their school team that they, you know, this is an important decision and get everybody's input and yeah, it sometimes does make sense. And then often or not often, on occasion, there are programs that are available only in the English stream that would benefit the student. So that's another situation where a change might be something to consider. But it's really important that any and all decisions regarding a student's um, continued participation in French immersion be made on a case-by-case -case basis because no two students are alike. And I wanted to just say something, if I could, to those parents who are listening out there, if your child is struggling, having some difficulty in the French immersion program, this is the message I would really like you to take with you today. And that is, you have the right to expect that your school team will partner with you to address your child's difficulties. And you have the right to expect that to the extent possible, everything will be done to increase your child's opportunities for success in French immersion. And you have the right to expect that any decisions regarding your child's participation in the French immersion program will take into account his or her strengths, needs, 
and interest because really at the end of the day, the decision to keep your child in French immersion is yours and yours alone. Yeah, and I think that's an important point because I know at least over here on the West Coast, as soon as a child begins to really struggle with reading, a lot of educators are very quick to say, okay, well, you should, you should take them out of French and put them in English before they really put that concentrated effort on providing the supports. And the research that you were mentioning is that, you know, if they get these supports in English, they are gonna see the result or the benefit in French. Right? It may not be the same, but they should at least be given the opportunity and the chance to succeed with the supports that they deserve and are entitled to. Yeah. And when it comes to phonological awareness, it doesn't really matter whether the teachers use a program of instruction that's English or French, because the skills do transfer across languages. But the reason our research team used English was that in this particular school board, the French immersion program did not begin until grade one. And right. we didn't want to wait until the children had had a chance to build those listening and speaking skills that would have you know, taken us five, six months before we could start doing any assessment of reading risk. So we chose to use English tests right off the bat, October, November, test all those kids, and then as soon as we knew those children that might need additional support, we got them into treatment and control groups and got started using English because they still weren't, weren't at the stage where French could have been used as the language of instruction. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple questions. Um, one is Orton-Gillingham method is the English program to help the kids but it's not available in French. So is there a program in French? And if yes, what is it called? I have been asked this question so many times. I'm afraid I do not have good news. As far as I am aware, the Orton Gillingham program, which is considered the gold standard as far as you know, instructional programs for reading disabilities. It's, it's not available in French, but I would like to mention that there are a number of French resources on two different websites. And one is the International Dyslexia Association of Ontario. And the other is Decoding Dyslexia. Ontario. They both have parts of their website that address um, the kinds of skills that children with reading disabilities need to develop French resources right there that can be used, but it's not Orton Gillingham. Right, but I would assume if you're using the concepts on having that phonics instruction in the lesson. I mean, phonics, uh, uh, French is an alphabetic language. So yeah. teaching those graphemes, phonemes, or letter sound uh, relationships and scaffolding and instruction is all things that can be done in French. It's just not the program has lessons designed for it. So yeah. if you're someone that's familiar with the Orton Gillingham program, um, and you're familiar with French and you can speak French and read French. It's something that you could adapt into French. Yep, for sure. Great. And then she, uh, she was saying, my 11 year old daughter wants to know if you have any advice for her on reading and writing. She has moderate to severe dyslexia with a very high IQ. She gets so tired, easily overwhelmed, headaches and shuts down. She tries very hard, but eventually gives up. Now her brain not only scrambles what she reads, but when we talk to her as well, the words we say, the words we said come out wrong. Okay. And this is a child who's in French immersion. That's what it sounds like. Yes. 
Okay, so I think it sounds like we need to figure out where her deficits are in terms of any phonological awareness instruction. Is it, does she have an understanding that sentences are made up of words, that words are made up of syllables, that, sil that words can be further broken down into phonemes? And if the answer to those three questions is yes, well then let's look at what she knows about phonemes and words. She, can she segment words into phonemes? Does she know the different, you know, phonemes that are in spoken words? Can she blend phonemes to create words? Can she tell you what the first phoneme is, last phoneme is, middle phoneme is in words? And if she can do all those things, then deleting and substituting might be the thing that she needs to focus on. I know, Catherine, you're familiar with David Kilpatrick's book, Equipped for Reading Success. Might be an excellent book for her to do some strengthening exercises. There are um, one minute exercises that build those phonemic proficiency skills. And if that's where she's at, that could be an interesting way of, of moving forward with her. I just don't have enough information on her. Yeah, it, it's always at. hard to answer questions about individuals without having that full idea. I mean, one thing that came into my mind was a potential issue with working memory. Um, that could also come into play if she's struggling with her language and mixing up the words. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, all right, then we have someone asking about your research. She said, your treatment program with the experimental group was done in English, sound letter correspondence, phonological awareness, uh, et cetera. Was it done in French at all? So in the pilot study, the study that preceded uh, the more recent one, we did use half English. And once the children had a foundation in the French language, we switched the instructional program over to French. So we had 10 weeks of English and 10 weeks of French. And that was the study that the ministry published um, it unfortunately had some limitations to it. So we had to put together a study that with a more rigorous methodology. And that's the one that, that I was talking about with the treatment and control group. Um, so it, uh, it's, it was, I'm trying to remember what, what was, the second part of that question? Um, sorry, I just need to expand the comments more. They, uh... I think it was just about whether it was in French. Oh, yes, did so you, yes, in, you did some of it in French, so you did answer right. that. So in the more rigorous study, we did not use French. We did it all in English, and that was because we were so um, very concerned about finding out who those children are that are struggling and starting the intervention as soon as possible. Right. Um, and then, oh, sh sorry, I just can't see all the comments. Um, someone said that they are an OG tutor. If tutoring a French immersion student, would it be helpful to introduce French equivalent of some of the English sight words as part of the English sight word when it's appropriate? And she's wondering your thoughts on that. Sight words. Yes. Yeah. So she's doing the work with the student in English and she wants to know if she should be showing the student that same word in French. Is that? that what you understand? That's what I understand from the question. Yeah, I think um, it might be best to just stick with English. I, I would hate to see 
um, the student experienced some confusion. Orton Gillingham is a pretty rigorous program, but I think what has to happen at at appropriate intervals is to say, look, I know you've learned that these letters or these graphemes make this sound in French. What you're seeing in your classroom will be a different sound and just making those differences very explicit for the student. But I wouldn't go back and forth every lesson at all. Yeah, one well, I I think um, one thing that I'd mentioned, I know um, Orton Gillingham often uses the term sight words, but it's, it's a matter of understanding that it's better to understand the orthog sorry, the orthographic mapping between the letter and sound correspondences in the word and uh, highlighting the area that's not phonetic. Right, and I, I'm sure it's similar in French. Like, yes, there are words that aren't completely phonetic, but the majority of the letters do meet the rules. So just highlight the area that isn't to help promote the orthographic mapping mm -hmm. to build that site vocabulary. Yeah, actually French is less irregular or more regular right. than English, so. Yeah. So yeah. I don't actually speak French. I am dyslexic myself and did not do that check. So, <laughs> but as a parent who has children in French immersion, I do find this very, very interesting. Um, so I can't speak to the French side of things very easily. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Then, uh, okay, so she's expanding. For example, once it's learned in English, would the French be helpful? Uh, and she's saying like the months in a year. So if you've taught, you know, January through December in English, and then is it worth teaching them the months of the year or the days of the week in French as part of the lesson? In her role as a tutor, I wouldn't recommend that because the child's getting that in the classroom setting. The, the tutor's role is to make the whole word recognition thing easier for the child to, to work with decoding and, and phonemic awareness and, you know, just, I, I think there would be far too much confusion if, if the tutor was going back and forth, just my opinion. I, I think that that's that's true. I mean, if you if you teach the strategies and say that you can transfer the strategies when you're analyzing the word to English, um, but not focusing on the, the switching language within the lesson, if you're already working with a child who's struggling with that. Yeah. Um, and next, there is a great deal of early intervention spoken about. What are the or would the same standards apply to a child with dyslexia in grade five? So if the child is already in grade five, that child has missed out on early intervention opportunities, but that child may still be struggling at the same level as a grade one child is struggling because, because they missed out on those explicit and systematic lessons. So for that child in grade five, we'd have to do a deep dive into what his or her skills are so that we can begin to remediate at whatever level that child is at. Um, it's, it's heartbreaking when that happens, when you see a child who's already in grade five, six, seven, eight, and, and hasn't had what has been so essential for other children. And you just have to start where they are and move forward from that point. 
Yeah, and it, it's something that can be done, but it does require a lot of intensive intervention. Yeah. Um, and so and this, just on that point, I would add, when you it takes a lot less time to work with a child when the achievement gap is like this than when you wait till grade five and the achievement gap is like this. There's, you're probably looking at months, if not years of special instruction. Yes. Yes, it's a, it takes a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, there was another question about your uh, research and what you do. Um, wondering what your additional assessment looks like and what it would include to determine which students were struggling. In our research? Uh, yes, I guess. So for your, how did you do it in your, your studies that you were speaking about and how would you do it now when you're working with parents? Okay, so first of all, I don't assess okay. the children of my clients. The schools do assessments or the if they're in a financial position to consider private parents seek out assessments. In my research, we were testing children on phonological awareness skills and word reading skills. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, so if you had a, a student come to you, you'd be working based on the assessments that were done at the school. Um, yeah, I usually meet with the parents, not with the child. Mm -hmm. And I'm helping the parents put those supports in place, um, helping them get ready for meetings with the school team, making sure that individual education plans, IEPs are properly developed. Um, if there is assistive technology needed, making sure that the child has access to the correct programs, that kind of thing. Great. Um, another one, back to your study. How many hours over the 18 weeks was spent on the intervention in your study? 15. <laughs> 15 hours in total um, is the amount of instruction the children in the treatment group and control group received. Okay. Uh, in grade one EFI, early front immersion, um, would you recommend the teachers do English reading tests to establish student risk of reading difficulty? This is always a tricky one because um, in many cases, French immersion teachers want to only use French for assessment purposes and for instruction. Um, I think it's a judgment call by the school and your grade team. Um, we used English because the program didn't start till grade one and it was getting late. We needed to get those kids identified and, and we needed to assist them right away. If you have a French immersion program that begins in junior kindergarten, so you've got an additional two years of foundation that, that you can lay in the language, then maybe you have more flexibility if you are building those language skills in JK. And then at the end of JK, you do some testing in French of phonemic awareness, phonological awareness, word reading, then that would be okay. But it has to be a decision supported by your school administrator, by your school board, and everybody on your grade team has to feel comfortable with it. Well, and I guess the, the thing to mention is a lot of these um, screening measures are available in English and they don't necessarily have the French translations. But I remember when I was doing work with the Woodcock Johnson, kids were allowed to respond in French, mm -hmm. right? So um, a lot of the early literacy screeners have an element of phonological awareness, uh, letter identification. So that's something that as you know, a, a teacher in that age group, you could maybe ask them in French 
that accept answers in English when it comes to letter identification. Yeah, it's just, it gets a little tricky because some of the letters make different sounds. Some of the vowels make different sounds. Oh, I'm not saying like letter sound, but if, if it's a J or G. <laughs> Sorry, my, my alphabet's rusty in French. That's, yeah, I again. see what you mean. Right. Yeah, there, there's those considerations. So yeah, they just have to talk about the pros and cons and what works best for their program. Mm hmm. Yes, definitely. Uh, and I think that's all our questions for now. Um, and I'm sure if you had a question that I missed, um, I'll go through them after and maybe send Nancy an email if there's any that we need to follow up on. Um, once the replay is available, I will look on posting the resources that Nancy mentioned from IDA Ontario and Decoding Dyslexia Ontario on the uh, French Immersion resources. Yeah. Oh, wait, we do have one more. It says, my daughter is done elementary school uh, now and can be off to middle school, but she reads like a grade two, three level. We had an English tutor that helped her for the year, but we put her in English. We couldn't find a tutor for dyslexics in French here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. Now I'm wondering how the heck she'll survive in middle school. Should I keep her home to catch her up or trust the school system? Um, I'm, a, I'm not sure whether you're um, talking about putting her back in the French immersion program after English or keeping, because you mentioned that you took her out and put her in English. Um, what would you suggest based on the information that we have? I think this is one of those situations where I always encourage a close partnership between the school team and the parents because if you bring that school team together, you've got a lot of knowledge. You've got, you know, a school administrator, a special education teacher, a classroom teacher who sees that child every day. You've got um, often a psychologist who sits in or a speech pathologist and parents. And you can, you know, look at the child's strengths and needs and figure out together what makes the most sense. And ultimately, like I said before, it's the parent's decision. Um, nobody is going to tell a parent they must take their child out of French immersion, but it does sound like that switch already took place with this particular oh, um, child. She's it says that French isn't available in grade six. Hmm. Um, so I, I think it's a, a case that would be a better one on one conversation than during the live. Um, but based on the stuff that we've discussed, if she's currently reading at a grade two, three level in French, she's likely going to be at that same level when she's reading in English. So um it would be it's wherever you can get the best intervention and really speaking with your school based team will help you know that the resources that they have available for your child in French and for you to be able to get oh, okay um, so Angie, maybe if you send me a private message, um, we can arrange a time to talk about this further um, because she's in grade seven and won't be going back to French. Yeah, so that's something that I can help uh, provide you more information with one-on-one. Um, -on -one. um, and we're one, so we have someone wondering if they could give, if you could give us access to the article regarding your son, your study, Nancy, is that one that you can send me a link to? Um, I can, most of them are available online. I think if you, I can certainly send you a link, but um, if you were to Google Nancy Wise 
phonological awareness, probably all the articles will come up right. on the internet. But the one that is the most recent one was 2016. Right, you did write a blog post for me. Are, are the links on that one? I think they are. So maybe I'll, I'll pop that the in the, the comments yeah. below after we finish. I, I can only do so much juggling between the conversation and the comments. So, um, yeah. Um, Great. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us this evening, Nancy. I really enjoyed this conversation and it was great to speak to you again. I've, I've enjoyed our conversations in the past and I think it's been a great chance to do it together, you know, on a live on Facebook this time so others can benefit. Thank you very much for the opportunity and I look forward to collaborating with you in the future. <laughs>